So the Bible is not about getting you to heaven and avoiding hell. The Bible is about bringing heaven into your hell. And God putting His heaven inside of what you are and not improving the old you, but completely eradicating the old you so that He can resurrect a new you created in the likeness and the image of God. So salvation is not about a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Salvation is about God putting His heaven inside of you so that God doesn't have to come back to earth to live on the earth. He can live on it through His church. That was the whole point of the Bible. God wrote the whole thing. If God wanted slaves, He could have created another billion angels. He already had an innumerable company of angels that do everything He tells them to do. If He says go, they go. If He says jump, they jump. He didn't need humans for that. He only created man because He wanted a relationship. He wanted an extension of Himself. And so He puts man here and breathes into His nostrils the lifeblood of heaven. Heaven kisses earth. And what comes out is man. God is so obsessed with you not being alone. So obsessed with you walking and dwelling and talking in relationship that it bothered Him to see Adam wandering around every day by himself. He even created Adam with a deficiency, a weakness. That's, most of us didn't learn that in Sunday school. We all heard God created Adam perfect. But man by himself is not perfect. He's lonely. He's alone. And he's never going to be able to replenish the earth. And so God said, we've got to find him some help. And so he marched dogs, cats, horses, pigs, camels, giraffes in front of him. Am I in the book? Go read the book of Genesis. The Bible says, and God marched every beast of the field in front of Adam. And when he did, Adam named them. And I think Adam, who has the wisdom of God, is looking for the right name. Everything that marches by, but nothing reminds him of himself. So he names them all the names that we know of animals. He, he, and he gets to the end of the list. And the Bible says, but no helper was found for Adam. So God wasn't marching them in front of Adam to see what Adam would name them. God was marching them in front of Adam to see if Adam would recognize himself in anything. He couldn't because he could only recognize himself in God. Are we too deep? Are we okay? Yeah. Friday night gospel. <laughs> so God puts Adam to sleep. And while Adam sleeps, he lifts his arm, pulls a rib from his side, fashions woman from his side, wakes Adam up, says, I have one more to march in front of you. Name her. And so when, when Eve walks in front, he names her Eve. He, he names her after himself. In fact, he so identifies her as himself. The first time Genesis tells you, and God created, it says he created male and female, and he called them Adam. Because Adam saw himself. And he said, that's not a dog, a cat, a fish, a bird, a tiger, a lion. That's me. And God said, okay, now we're ready. Man is not alone. He is so obsessed with relationship, God is, that he won't leave you alone. So if he wanted slaves, he could have just, re he just done the angels over again. But he wanted relationship. And he lost it. Because man preferred right out of the gate in the garden to achieve righteousness through his own works. And I hate when I hear people say, God, God kicked Adam out of the garden because he couldn't remain in the perfect presence of God. No, God chases Adam and runs him down through the entire scriptures. Everywhere you turn is God begging for relationship with man until Jesus comes along. And man has so warped their perception of God and then comes Jesus. Man's perception of God was so warped that late in Jesus' ministry in John 14, he's telling the disciples, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. Don't worry about it. And there's a lot of rooms in Daddy's house, and Dad and I are making up rooms, and, and I'm the way to see him as Father, and I'm the life to see him as Father, and I'm the truth to see him as Father. And Philip says this little nugget of wisdom. Lord, that's all well and good, but it would just make us happy if you'd just show us the Father. And Jesus' heart breaks. 
And he looks at his disciples and says, Philip, how long do I have to be with you before you realize that if you see me, you've seen the Father? This is what Daddy looks like. Daddy loves. Daddy touches. Dad listens. Dad heals. Dad's full of peace and righteousness. The whole volume, the whole book about that man, Christ Jesus. So how could he shine a light, put away death, shine a light on life, bring life to people that already had life? Because for God, it wasn't about physical death and physical life. It was about the life of the Spirit. It was about the life of God coming alive in man. It was about your death in the spirit realm not being something you're working on. It's about your death in the spirit realm being what happened when Jesus died on the cross. How many of you know 2 Corinthians chapter 5? Paul says, we thus conclude that if one man died, all men died. Who was the one man that died? Jesus. Who are the all men that died? Everybody. And he said, and so what has been committed unto us is the ministry of reconciliation that we tell the world that God, not holding their sins and their trespasses against them, hath reconciled them back unto himself. Which means that the message of the church is not God, convict my neighbor of his sins. The message of the church should be God, convict my neighbor of Jesus. That Jesus has paid a great price. That Jesus has bled and died and rose from the dead so that they could have life and they could have it more abundant.